Pan El Shala. I want to start off by saying, Karla Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That is giving all honor, glory, and praises to the Heavenly Father known as Yahweh, who the world just says God. And giving all daughter to our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So, sister, you believe in God, sister? You believe in the Bible through and through? That's good, sister. Real quick, can I ask you, what is your nationality? African American, that's okay, good one. Can you find African American in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the homeland, what's the hell on that homeland, sister? Africa? Well, Africa's a continent. There's many countries in Africa. Do you know the Okay, do you know the country that we come from? This could be a very long conversation. Indeed. That's good. Sister knows no history. That's right. Um, a lot of people don't also realize that Salvador, Brazil is the mm -hmm. second largest black city and second largest slavery capital in the world outside of the slave black capital. So there's a lot of rich black history in um, Salvador, Brazil. If you haven't been there, also you should go there. Come on this side. Let me say that again, sis. Okay, that's good. Yo, the sister, give hey, it up for the sister. She knows some history. Hey, hey, say that one more time. Go ahead and say that for the camera, sister. Oh, I was saying that um, outside of Africa, a lot of brown and black people also were dropped off in Brazil. So in Salvador, Brazil is the sec one of the second largest um, black cities outside of Africa. So oh, if you travel to Salvador, Brazil, you'll learn a lot about our history and a lot of, you know, what we went through in the Brazilian slave trade as well. That's right. So all praises. Little, That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh one in uh seventeen. So it's important to learn. You can talk about it, but it's important to go there and to learn and to see things for yourself because here where we are there's a lot of false narratives. So I believe that as a people, if we want to be out here talking the word, saying what you know about where we come from, you have to go there and you need to study, you know. Um, so I've been, I've been to West Africa, I've been to Salvador, Brazil, I've been to a lot of other places and I've also been to a lot of places in Europe where we experience um, mm. enslavement. That's so powerful. to know okay. what you're talking about is really also to go and study and get different um, information from these continents and different places that we've been. All praises. You know, All praises. Now, well, I appreciate what y'all are doing, and thank you for sharing it with me, and thank you, you know, for inviting me over just to say hello. Right, yeah. right, right. So keep doing what you're doing, keep your faith strong, um, and just continue to- We didn't share nothing with you, sister, yet. Well, just your moment. You know, just be sure the time. One precept. Sure. So I would just get quick to the point. So you being a so-called African-American, sister, you would be from the tribe of Judah. All right, you're an Israelite. You come from the tribe of Judah. Our Lord and Savior, Amashiach Yahushua, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he also comes from the same tribe, that tribe of Judah. So if he was here on this earth right now, he would be called a so-called black man. Right. And the brother gonna read this precept. The book of Galatians chapter four, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem, so that's where we come from, sister. And we are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are your brothers. You see this right here? This whole chart? These are your people. And Jerusalem is where we come from, sister. So what we're out here to do is tell our people that we got to keep the commandments, follow God, and that's how we'll get out of this uh, hellhole that we're in known as America with three Ks. You feel me? So do you know any of the commandments, sister? You got to get going? Okay, sister. Well, have a good night. Be safe out here. You know. Check out, Check it out. Absolutely.
We got the, uh, you scan that QR code, that's our YouTube page on the back. You ever got questions, you know, there's an email on there, you can hit us up. And the brothers, you know, get in contact with you. Take care, sister. Repent and keep the commandments. Hey, yo, uh, clap it up. The sister knew a lot of history. And, you know, that made me proud. And it put a smile on my face because a lot of so-called black and Hispanic women, hey, can, they don't know a damn thing about quick, history. Just two scriptures, sister. It is, it's, two scriptures, two scriptures, okay? For the Lord. This for the Lord, right? Let us teach you real quick. All right, all praise. How y'all sisters doing? Can I ask y'all real quick? What's your nationality? Oh, uh, praise. You? Black, so, sure, black sister. What's your skin tone? Your skin tone? Brown. Brown, okay. Oh, so, you, sister, you'd be from the tribe of Ephraim. He's an Ephraimite. You, sister, would be from the tribe of Judah. So, what we out here to do is teach our people that so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we all make up one family. If you look at it, just and how we live on our day to day, we do a lot of the same things, we talk similar, and we go through a lot of the same predicaments and struggles that we've, you know, been in since 1441 when the uh, Portuguese came over. So let me get that in uh, Baruch 1 and 9. And I'm gonna just read this real quick and see if y'all can relate to this and if this has happened to other people. Go ahead and read that out. It's the book of Baruch chapter 1 verse 9. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away Jeconias and the princes and the captives. And the captives, now. That word right there, captive, when you think of it, it goes into what? Captivity, right? What's another word for captivity? Okay, slavery, bondage, right? When you look into our history, have we not gone through those things? When you look into the history of so-called African-American, have they not gone through those things? When uh, Columbus came over and started pillaging La Isla Boricua, right? Before it wasn't called Puerto Rico, what was it called? Boricuen right so these people came over here pillaged us and took away our history our knowledge and our culture why would they do that to brainwash us that's a good thing right there because what they do when they brainwashed us they bought who who got sibo there he is grab sibo who's this guy right here because if i go to your grandma she's gonna say i have soon has to Right, and why is that? And just like how you said, it's the brainwash. Do you know what he looks like though in the Bible? Can we show y'all? Honestly, you know he only looks. If you go to other places, he doesn't look like Such as uh, the Russian icons, of course. Can we show y'all real quick what he looks like in the scriptures? Not what that is, because that's iconoclasm. That happened during the time of the Renaissance. You feel me? They painted our images in their images. But do you know what the, the white supper is? The supper? The supper? Yes. What is it? The supper, the, you talking about the Last Supper? Yeah, they repainted that. But do you know what it is? That's when Yahweh Shai was breaking it down and telling the p disciples that that was going to be. Do you know what the picture is? The picture? Well, break it down, sister. The Michelangelo, the picture of the Michelangelo, that was yes. family. Okay. That was not the disciples, that was nobody in the Bible, that was his family. Yeah. Right, they yeah. No, that, that, she going in the Cesar Borgia. picture of his family. Yeah. And this dude is Caesar Bogier. He's the sixth son of Pope Alexander of Rome. And this is what they, what Michelangelo drew. He was, you know, he drew this dude. But let's see what the scripture says. Because this is what they taught us when Columbus came over, when George Washington was over here, pillaging and destroying our people. You got that in uh, Revelation? Who got Revelation? You got, you got your undeniable book? Uh, undeniable. Give me. Uh, undeniable. Yeah, okay, you got Danny Tenenbaugh? Which you got? Go ahead and read that. The Rev uh, Salakia, the book of Revelation, chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 1. Now, real quick, what does the word reveal, uh, Revelation, mean? Like, what's the prefix to that word? Revelation? Mm -hmm. To reveal. To reveal, right? Ooh, okay. okay, okay. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So he showed it unto his servants. Now, if you do some study, you know that the servants are the children of Israel. Now, jump down to the point. Verse 13. 
And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. The Son of Man, that would be Jesus, right? Clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had clothes on, he wasn't just no ghost. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So he had like a big gold WWE belt. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So he has white woolly hair, breathe. As white as snow. And it's white. Now, what people on this earth have woolly hair? Us, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And he has red eyes, read. And his feet. And his feet. Now your feet match the rest of your body, right? Read. Like unto fine brass. Like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown, read. As if they burned in a furnace. And if I take that copper and throw it in a furnace, what color is it come out? So Christ right there is telling you that he would be a so-called black. And look, the brothers got the images. Just like how you said. See, look, hey, this puts a smile on my face. That's two sisters back to back that know some history. But you know, have y'all seen Hidden Colors? Hidden Colors, I have not seen that, okay, sister. So I'm going to put you on. Watch Hidden Colors 1. And, okay, so in Hidden yeah, Colors, he don't seen all of them. In 2012, they came out with Hidden Colors 1. Tariq Nashi, he said, actually, Shahabazada is the one who got on there. And she said, if you demasculate a black man, you demasculate an economy. Because if a black man leaves, he's gay, he's dressing as a woman. You know, that's in the Willie Lynch letter. That's right. And the Lord said that if we don't follow his commandments, that we're going to be a cursed people, right? First above everybody. And when you go into history, when you go into everything, who are the people that are at the bottom of society? Always. Our people, right? So how can we reverse that so that we're not on the bottom but on the top praying look he's gonna give you a precept go ahead and give it to the sister the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Uh, I'll give you one curse. Oh, come on. Let me, let me get 16 real quick. Go ahead, read that. It says, Curse shall thou be in the city. Now, who, when you go to all these cities, New York, you feel me? Baltimore, Chicago, here in Raleigh, who's at the bottom? We are. You don't see nobody else. You don't see the Arabic man going through the struggles that we go through. Instead, what they do, they come over and they set up shop. You see the, the, the Hindus, they come over and they set up shop. But yeah, it's hard for us to, in our own communities to even get a loan. That's because we're at the bottom. The African, the, you know, you feel me, the Hamis, the East African, Ethiopians, Eritreans, Somalis, they could come over and set up shop. Start giving you all types of BS. Giving you what? All types of, uh, you know, tobacco products destroying you. They say, hey, all these things are supposed to help us, but how if they destroying us? They won't do it themselves. You won't see no Arabic smoking a cigarette himself, but he'll sell it to you. That's to what? Destroy your community, but he'll uplift his. Go ahead and read verse 54. Uh, let me get 46, actually. It says, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. How we know bodegas, bodega? Cat on the bread. That's a sign, right? That's a sign. So this is for a sign and for a wonder. Go ahead and read uh, verse 54. Actually, finish that out. Gone. It says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Right. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. So who do we serve here? And La Ila Boricua, who do they serve? Mm -hmm. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger mm -hmm. and in thirst. So when you hungry and thirsty, are you buying from your own people? Read. And in nakedness, your clothes. Where do you go get them? Read. And in want of all things. And in want of all things, when you want to go get a car, you want to go to pa get a passport. Who do you go to? White man. Go and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Did this not happen to our people? 
Did that not happen to the so-called blacks and Hispanics and natives? Okay, jump down to verse 54. Verse 54. This is one of the curses. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. Your brother that's very tender and delicate with you, read. His eye shall be evil toward his brother. Is that not Trinitarios right there? Is that not MS-13, Bloods and Crips? And now you got an evil eye towards your brother, read. And toward the wife of his bosom. Towards the wife of his bosom, so that's domestic violence. When you look, especially in the Spanish communities, our people need in what? Domestic violence. When you look in the community of the so-called black man, what happens? Domestic violence, read. Mm -hmm. And toward the remnant of his children. And towards the remnant of his children, which he's gonna do what? Which he shall leave. And my pops went to the store and never came back. Who says that? Who says that? Read. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children. Well, we can uh, skip that. Let's go to uh, 56. The tender and delicate woman among you. So now even the woman, read. Which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground. Y'all sisters were so precious. Y'all even put it back then, didn't even walk on the ground. Which one? Uh, Deuteronomy, we're on verse 56, 2856. It says, The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom so y'all back then y'all didn't even walk on the you know on the floor we had people carrying y'all because y'all are royalty y'all are princesses you feel me but now what ended up happening now just like how it says now her eye is evil towards the husband so now you got what that you know beef especially in our you know families we see all the time la tía peleando con el tío my peleando con el pai now you're all over here beefing with your uncle and whatnot uh, uh, Can you pull up where it says about uh, the daughters of my people have become like the ostrich? These are all curses that the Lord said to be upon our people. Um, it said, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom uh -huh. and toward her son and toward her daughter. And toward her children. Nowadays, the so-called black and Hispanic woman, what will she do? She will use her kids against the father for what? For her own gain. And, that, and then guess what? All that child support, all that stuff, and you know, we talk about it because these are the things that we live through. All that child support will end up happening. The kid don't even see that money. Now she spent all that money on herself. She's now used her own children as an advantage to uplift herself in this society that's taught her to do so. The cycle continues. Now how do we break that cycle, sister? Not just prayer. Prayer is a good thing, definitely. You gotta pray to Yahweh though, not not Sibo, where he wherever that dude is. You don't pray to him. You gotta pray to Yahweh. But we have to follow these laws. And I was going to say, and that's cool, because I, I was going into that today. That was my lesson. Do you know any of those? Nah. Let me get You read pork? You like bacon? How about you, says Sometimes? Well, did you know that one of the commandments is the Lord didn't want us to eat pork? And bacon is obviously pork. Right. But, you know, another thing also is that, you know, if we fear God, then we should, by natural, naturally, keep his commandments. Right? We're going to read you this commandment. You got Exodus 23? Come on, read that. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We're not supposed to have any other gods before Yahweh, but and no idolatry. That's right. But what ends up happening is that now, being brainwashed, being in the society, we especially being at the bottom have put other gods before Yahweh. And what's that one main god? Money. We need it to survive, of course, but that has become a focus in one of the main gods that you now see in our people's communities, where they rather say, you know what? Screw the Lord. I gotta get this bag, and that's what everybody talk about now in 2023. I gotta get this bag. I gotta get this bag. Listen, it don't matter how much money at the end of the day you make, because when you die, you can't take it with you, and you can still be a, a you know, millionaire, the cops are still gonna look at you as a nigga in a spick. You feel me? They still gonna look at you as what? A slave in America. But yet, our people continue to what? Follow in these other gods. Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. All these things are other gods of other people that yet we follow, because 
los boricuas no estaban practicando Navidad. They didn't follow, you know, uh, Thanksgiving. The so-called black man and black woman was not celebrating Easter when they got off the slave ships. So now what we're doing is we're following these gods, and yet we realize that all this has been doing is destroying our people. Let me get uh, Exodus. Uh, go ahead, sister. You gotta go. Yeah, no doubt. Cuida, hermana. Y'all sisters be safe. You feel me? Y'all have a good night. All right, so y'all Israel, so real quick, right, before y'all leave, I'm going to tell you once again. You, sister, you come from the tribe of Judah. That's the same tribe that Jesus Christ came from. Powerful, mighty tribe. You, sister, you come from the tribe of Ephraim. This is your fellow tribeman right here, Ephraimite. And these, yeah, go ahead, take a picture. You too, sister, take a picture of this. Because this is the information that our people need to know. Our people don't know none of these things. Our people been out here just brainwashing, smitten with madness, you feel me? So yeah, y'all just take a picture of this. So you were Ephraimite? Go ahead and say that. Ephraimite, that's that's right. And you sister? That's right, sister uh, Jewel. Alright, uh, y'all sisters have be safe, have a good night. Alright. And that's why we out here. It's to wake all people up. The world hates seeing black and brown unity. They do. Truth be told, they don't want it because it's scary to them. And guess what? It is scary. Let it be scary to y'all, because once this starts happening, you know, guess what? Your whole country is doomed. Your civilization is done with. Right. And hey, that's just the new history. It's not often that you see a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, or child that knows any history. And that was good for them sisters to know something, because at least them knowing something, they were able to understand these scripts better. That's right. You feel me? If you don't know no history, once we start bringing out history in here, you don't know what's going on. But them sisters, the sister that came before, she knew about the history. She said, yo, yeah, you know, most of the Judites went into Brazil. She knew right. about that. Right. And then you got this sister talking about Michelangelo and how he painted all that stuff. Right. So it's good for our people to read these things. But now what we got to do is keep reading this. That's right. Get back into our history. That's right. So let me uh, get uh, Exodus 20 and 8. And let me get... Uh, Exodus 20, man. Let me get Exodus uh, 20 and 16. Oh, praise it. We got eight. Go ahead and read that. <laughs> this is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. You're supposed to remember the Sabbath day. That's right. But the so called black, Hispanic, and Native American, he, what does he do? They don't remember the Sabbath day. We're supposed to be resting. You're supposed to be out here doing what the Lord tells you to do. But guess what? The Sabbath day is the day that the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man, woman, and child break the most all the time. Because why? Who's taught them that Friday and Saturday is your turn-up days? Esau. Right. That's who taught you to get turned up Friday, Saturday, go to church Sunday morning. And what day you get paid? Right. Friday, Saturday. Right. Right. So, you can, so you get paid on that same day right. to blow your whole check right. on the Sabbath day. It's madness. That's You're right. supposed to be resting, but what do we do? Nah, our people rather go get drunk on the Sabbath, go right. smoke on the Sabbath, right. commit all types of fornication on the Sabbath, right. adultery on the Sabbath day. Y'all people really got to understand what's really going on. Your math ain't mathing. Y'all talk about loving God, going to church and all that, but you constantly break these commandments. Right. Like the brother Yahshua was going in so mightily. Y'all say y'all love God, but y'all can't even keep the first commandment. Right. Our people right. are out here just smeared with madness. And these are the things that will benefit our communities when we keep these, uh, you know, these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because imagine if the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men did not spend their money on Friday, Saturday. Right. Imagine what it would do to this country. Right. It would cripple the economy. That's right. We're the number one spenders in this economy. That's right. We're the number one spenders in everything. Imagine that we said, hey, you know what, these two days, this, you know, this one day right here, we're going to hold that money. We're not going to do it because...